Okay, this video is about quadrature amplitude modulation. Uh, I've been on a bit of a journey over the past week or so to try to understand what this is all about. And uh, fundamentally, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but there are a lot of nuances to it. Um, so one of the things I did was to um, create this Python program that uh, simulates quadrature modulation. And um, it's running right now. Um, so the, at, at its core, the idea is to be able to transmit with each transmitted waveform uh, more than one bit of information. And the way that that's, that's achieved is by using uh, two of the attributes of the waveform, the um, amplitude and the phase of the transmitted waveform. And by combining those two uh, pieces of information, you can transmit more than one bit at a time. And uh, the animation that's running here is actually able to send 16 symbols. Uh, it's called 16 QAM or 16 Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. And this diagram is called a constellation diagram. And what it, what it uh, presents or represents is the combination of the um, amplitude of the transmitted waveform um, that's represented by these circles here. There's actually three different amplitudes that are, are possible. And then these different phase angles, which is the angle from the x-axis, positive in this direction, negative in this direction. Um, so the amplitude is the distance from the center of this diagram to the point, And then the phase is the angle from the x-axis. Um, the, on the right, we're showing the time domain, uh, um, representation of the waveform that would be transmitted. Um, and what we're doing is we're combining what's called the quadrature waveform, which is a sine wave, with the in-phase waveform, which is a cosine. Uh, a sine and a cosine waveform are naturally 90 degrees out of phase. That's where the term quadrature comes from. So, And by combining those two different waveforms and varying their amplitude, you can produce all these different output waveforms, which is the blue waveform. Oh, here again, on this diagram, the red is the sine wave, the green is the cosine wave, and then the blue is the resultant combined waveform, which would be transmitted to the receiver. So the blue waveform represents the symbols on the constellation diagram. And in 16 QAM, we have 16 unique symbols that can be sent uh, by a combination of amplitude and phase angle. Um, and therefore, we can send four bits or represent four bits with each of those 16 different waveforms. Um, and so in this case, I'm showing the bit patterns here is 000 down at the lower left, and then 1111 in the upper right, and then they just change as you, or increase as you go this way on the, in the diagram. That's a predefined arranged mapping between the bit pattern and the um, amplitude and phase. Um, what I'm showing here is just for demonstration purposes. There are some standards, but uh, I'm not sure that this is one of them um, in terms of the bit pattern that corresponds to the phase angles and the uh, amplitudes. But in any event, uh, these circles represent the amplitudes that you can have. So there's three different circles, so three different amplitudes, and then there's a whole variety of different uh, phase angles that you can have by combining these amplitudes of cosine and sine waveforms. Um, so that's the fundamentals of um, how you can send multiple bits with a particular waveform and combination of amplitude and phase. And then what this animation is doing is showing how this might work in practice. If you had, say, a string of bits that you wanted to send, because quadrature amplitude modulation is basically a modulation technique to transmit digital data, if you had this stream of bits, you would uh, parse them into groups of four bits and then walk through those four bits, figure out what uh, point on the constellation diagram corresponds to those four bits, and then vary your amplitude of your sine and cosine wave, combine that with your carrier wave uh, to transmit the signal with the appropriate phase and amplitude. And so that's what this uh, animation is showing. You're walking through groups of four bits, uh, picking off the corresponding point, that produces the output sine and cosine in combination produces the output RF transmitted waveform in blue. 
um, yeah, the amplitude and the phase of that uh, output sig signal is shown up here. Um, I'm going to turn this, uh, stop this animation just for a second, and then um, show um, the effect of noise, just so we can understand that. This slider here shows what uh, noise would look like. So obviously the uh, transmitted signal would potentially have some noise. It's not going to give you the ideal uh, amplitude and phase angle. And depending on the amount of noise, you're going to get a variation in where that point would lie on a constellation diagram at the receiver. And so um, if the noise is too high, you can actually wander off into another region of the constellation diagram and the receiver would then misinterpret that information uh, and you would get some errors in transmission. So that's just something to be aware of how noise affects um, you know, what the receiver is actually going to see relative to what you're trying to transmit. Um, okay, um, in addition to this um, animation in the Python program, I've implemented this in hardware, and uh, let me just show you that. What I have here is, um, first off, I have a um, signal generator, which is generating the, a 70 megahertz uh, signal, which is called the local oscillator signal. Um, that would be the carrier wave frequency. That's, that is then being carried in through a uh, bandpass filter into the input of this mini circuits quadrature modulator device which has the carrier or the local oscillator as an input and then inside this device it splits that signal into the sine and the cosine waveforms which are in quadrature at the same 70 megahertz uh, frequency and then combines it with the digital signals um, over here we have the um, in phase and then the quadrature signals um, to produce a combined output which comes out of the RF port and in this case would then go into um, my oscilloscope so we can actually visualize that uh, but that could, might go off to an amplifier and transmitter to transmit to the receiver and the way that I am producing the digital signals that control the amplitude of the um, the quadrature and in-phase signals is by using my uh, Digital Inch Electronic Explorer board. And let me show you the software that's controlling that and uh, what's happening there, just real quick. Okay, this is waveform software. This is the um, interface to the arbitrary waveform generator. And there's two channels um, on this uh, hardware that I have. So what I'm doing is I'm varying the voltage levels from a, a negative 400 milliamps to a positive, excuse me, 400 millivolts to a positive 400 millivolts in four steps. Um, and that controls the quadrature um, amplitude levels. And then I have another channel, which is also in four steps, also going from minus 400 millivolts to positive 400 millivolts, but doing it at a slower pace so that uh, we go through all of the quadrature phase changes or amplitude changes and then step up and do the same thing on the in phase um, as we just step through that we repeat it so what what we're doing is actually um, increasing the amplitude of the quadrature and then it, so we're going this way and then we're stepping over here and we're going this way stepping over here and going this way so we're going through this entire diagram one at a time. So I'm not doing the mapping from any particular bitstream, but in this particular case in the hardware, I'm just exercising um, the hardware to go through all the 16 steps, um, which are possible in the 16 qualm constellation diagram. So that's what this is doing. Um, and now we'll look at it on the scope. And in the same way that I was doing it in the animation, I'm stepping through it maybe one symbol per second, and you can see the amplitude changing. There's three different amplitudes in 16 qualm, and you can see the phase changing. I've got uh, two waveforms shown here. The blue square wave is just a 70 megahertz um, fixed uh, uh, sign, uh, square wave that I'm triggering on, 
so that I can show the phase of the RF output from the modulator, quadrature modulator, uh, relative to that. So you can see the phase changes happening. So we get three amplitudes, various phase changes as it's going through that uh, constellation diagram, essentially. And um, like I say, I'm just doing it about one symbol per second, very slow relative to the way this would work in the real world, just so that we can understand it by looking at it at, at slow speed. So I'm gonna just increase the rate of that using uh, the waveform software controls. Just give me a second here and I'll bump those up to a higher rate. And now we will zoom out so we can look at this as you might ordinarily see it on an oscilloscope and stop it and zoom out a little bit. So we've got the one, two, three amplitudes, essentially, just like we saw on the, um, on the constellation diagram. And then if I zoom in on uh, a particular area, let's see if we can see a phase change happening here. It looks like right over here, perhaps. And zooming in. Okay, so this is an area of the constellation diagram, for example, where we are at the same magnitude. So maybe we're going from this point to this point. So we've got the same amplitude, but we're going through a phase change. So back over here. And uh, we're just going to enlarge the blue square wave so we can see this happening. So here you can see that the the bottom of the RF waveform, the output from the quadrature modulator is meeting the peak of this square wave. And then we go through the transition, and here's the next symbol. Same amplitude, but its phase has shifted, so now we're to the left of the peak of the square wave. So that uh, that is showing, once again, the uh, physical implementation with a mini circuits quadrature modulator, just using a... Uh, signal generator at 70 megahertz for our carrier wave and then the digital and electronic explorer board to send digital signals into the i and the q inputs to produce our quadrature output rf signal all right that's it for today and i appreciate you watching i will post a link to this uh, python simulation code at the bottom and that'll take you to my github if you want this code. Thanks for watching.